Thank you everybody for being here and thanks for the opportunity to present. Uh, my name is Mauricio Dirante and this is version control for WordPress with and without Composer. Uh, I go, my pronouns are he, him. I go by dinner corner nine. If you speak English, Spanish, French, or Portuguese, you can talk to me. I might not be able to reply to sing the English talk. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, uh, that is my email. I do Drupal, WordPress, React, and I am a senior software engineer at Agarno. I am from Nicaragua, beautiful land of lakes and volcanoes. And it is like 34 degrees or 28 degrees, depending on the season. So for me, being in Portugal is kind of chilly. Um, so, uh, what is this session about? I will be talking about managing your entire WordPress code base with version control. I know that you can use version control for a theme or for a plugin, but this session is for the whole uh, the whole project. In particular, I will be talking about Git, and there are other version control systems like Mercurial and version, but I will be focusing on Git. Um, and specifically, talking about managing code. When we have a WordPress project, we also have a database, we also have user uploaded files, and I'm going to refer to some tools that we, we can use to work with uh, configuration, for example, but for the most part, we will be focusing on code. And that this session is not specific to any hosting provider. At the very end, I will be making some you know, references to what your provider might give you out of the box, but for the most part, it is, you know, on your own, or maybe you manage your own server, and you don't have any extra feature from a, a specific hosting providers. So that being said, um, I will be talking about version control with, with Git, as I said before, just from a high level overview. Um, this allows you to keep track of changes. You will be able to know who made a change and when, and um, if you ever need to roll back because if there was a mistake or maybe some, something malicious going to your website, then you, should, you will be able to go to a previous version of the code. And also, Git itself provides built-in tools to find um, problems and like try to solve them. In particular, Git by set, I will be talking about some other useful Git commands towards the end of the session. But again, like, Git is very common, very popular, and that's why I'm focusing on this one. In terms of WordPress, it, it will be very important that you get familiar with the folder structure, um, in particular with WP content. Uh, in most of the screenshots that I have, it is a site installed in English, but if you were to install WordPress in another language, like we are in Portugal, of course, we can install it in Portuguese, uh, you will get some extra folders that you also need to be mindful of. Um, in terms of using WordPress in combination with Composer, I will show you both ways. But um, when we talk about using Composer, we mean downloading WordPress itself, what we call uh, what we call core, and plugins and themes, third-party libraries if you need to. Um, there are two popular options: uh, John P. Bloch has one, and Roots uh, has another one called Bedrock, which is the one that I'm going to demo. But again, we're going to like at some point take a step back and, and see the big picture. And we're going to learn about uh, version constraints for different packages. And before jumping into the examples, the last things to point out is uh, very important to be aware of the git ignore file. And more than the file itself is what things you are going to ignore. Uh, just to give you an idea, do we include a WP config file? Do we include a user uploaded file? Do we include um, uh, the, the function file? And we're going to be covering each of these um, and, and give you a reason as to why you should or should not include them. And there might be one getting more file at the root of your project. There might be multiple ones inside folders, but you might also have a global one. So just be mindful that uh, the way that it works, you it is very likely that you will have more than one, more than one gitignore file uh, that might be affecting your current project. Okay, so this is kind of a summary of what we are going to be talking today. Should we include uh, any sensitive data like database credentials in version control? No matter if you're using Composer or not, please don't do that. Um, if, if 
we are uploading uh, files. Uh, you know, you create a new post, you upload an image, and that user uploaded file should be included in version control. No, please. Um, WordPress code itself, if you are not using Composer, you include it. If you are using Composer, you do not. Uh, content plugin and themes, again, if you are using uh, Composer, there is no need for that. Without Composer, you need to include it. Custom slash premium modules and themes, uh, yes, in both cases. And in the case of uh, well, premium plugins and themes, if you are not using Composer, basically any module, any theme that you have to the site, no matter the type, you will be adding. But in, if you are using Composer, it depends how you include it. And I will be giving some examples of how you can do it. And again, it will depend depending. Uh, it will depend based on which approach you take to include that uh, premium plugin or theme. Uh, again, we're going uh, to go from, uh, you know, to different examples. Initially, I planned to do a live demo, but those usually go wrong. So instead, I have the screenshots and the commands that you can uh, run on your own computer later on to replicate what I did. And before showing anything, I want to quote Alia Barreau, author of CSM Secrets. Uh, she said that understanding the process of finding a solution is more valuable than the solution itself. And the reason why I put this up front is because I'm going to give you some guidelines today. But by all means, you need to understand the different tools that we're going to use. And feel free to question what I am presenting, like why did he include that or why did he ignore that? Um, your uh, specific project might be different. And as long as you understand the reasoning behind your choices, that is fine. You can, by all means, divert from what I am uh, suggesting. So, uh, another kind of opinionated uh, thing that I will be doing today, and this is mostly for practical purposes, um, I will be using DDEV in my examples. Uh, DDEV is a tool for local development environment, very popular, very useful, very powerful, uh, in, in, in short. I do Drupal and WordPress, so one tool for both uh, projects makes it easy for me. Uh, so if you see a DDEV command, uh, a DDEV at the beginning of any command, it is only because I am using this tool, and if you're using something else like Lando or local or something completely different, feel free to either replace that command or drop it all together. But for the most part, uh, we will be issuing commands for Git, for Composer, for WP CLI. So that's the most, most important part. So let's go ahead. Like, how do we work with WordPress without Composer? And yes, you can FTP into a server. You can download a tar file or a zip file and manually unzip it. But for simplicity, we are going to be using WP CLI for downloading uh, the code and for uploading, uh, updating the code. So again, like, uh, bear with me. These are the commands from the live demo, and that is part of the output. Uh, at the very beginning, I, I am just setting up a the project. Like, if you're using a different tool, you don't need to worry too much about it. This is making, basically saying, I want to start a WordPress project. And if you see in the second command, I am using Apache FPM. This is going to come in handy later when we talk about HD access files. But for now, just be mindful of that. That is something that we include um, in this setup. And when we do this, we get a .dd folder, which is uh, all the configuration that it needs will be contained in that folder. And then we have two WP config files, one that is just WP config and another one that says DDEP at the very end. And we're going to see the content of those later. Uh, I initialize my Git repository and commit uh, you know, all that I have at the moment. And after that, again, this is something specific to DDEP. Uh, WordPress in the WP config file includes, includes uh, salts and unique keys that um, you are supposed to randomly generate at the start of your project. But DDA in particular, uh, if you, you know, turn off the machine and start the project again, it's going to regenerate those keys uh, for you, those cells. So we don't want to do that because otherwise we're going to be producing changes in the WP config file every time that we start the project. So the way to prevent that is just opening the file and removing the lines. Actually, it's written in the file itself. Like if you remove this comment, and uh, DDEP is not going to regenerate those keys for you. So again, like this is just some groundwork that I need to do, and from here on is WordPress. So 
How do I download WordPress with WPCLI? Uh, I execute the, the command to download WordPress core. Um, I check what things came with it. And basically, the very first time, I just add everything to the repository. Install with, uh, again, with WPCLI. And I can launch the, the website, like I can in as an as administrator. So at the very beginning, I just commit everything. Um, if I want to update uh, WordPress itself, again, I can use the, the CLI tool. And in this case, I highly recommend that you don't, you don't do a git add uh, period. It is better to like go folder by folder if possible, and in some cases, five by five so that you understand what changes are being introduced. Um, something that it might uh, affect you, uh, and this is coming later, that's the access file. Uh, if it is being overwritten for some reason, you want to understand if you are not losing any configuration change that you actually need to preserve. So by looking at uh, at least some key files, uh, the difference of each, you can you can say, yes, I want to commit this change or not. But for the most part, we're going to commit everything. The, the idea here is that be careful. Just, just, just don't do a blind get out period and commit everything. Um, you will be using some of the benefits of the version control if you don't get a chance to review what is being modified with the updates. And after that, you, know, uh, you review, you commit, you add, and then you commit. In the case of plugins and themes, I mean, CLI will be your best friend. Uh, in these cases, the themes and the modules, uh, the themes and the plugins are going to land in the WP content folder. And you just like git add, you know. And my recommendation is you make a commit for every plugin that you add. Even though you can include the whole folder in one row, it is better to go uh, one plugin and one theme at a time. And same for uh, updating, you, you can use the CLI tool. Uh, you can use the CLI tool for uh, updating one by one. In the case of custom or premium models and themes, uh, if you are not using Composer, basically you are committing everything. So we, uh, the same advice uh, from before, commit one login or one theme at a time. Now, let's start adding some content. Um, you create, we create a new post, we upload an image. Then we get uh, some files in the WP content slash uploads. These you do not want to add uh, to the repository hub. So how do you go about not adding those? By using gitignore. So you create a gitignore file and you put in one line, this folder I want to exclude. And by doing so, the folder is going to be excluded but the gitignore file itself needs to be included in the git repository. So again, those are the commands to do it. And let's just start thinking about some you know, use cases or questions. Should we include the WP config file? Uh, in many places, they recommend not to do it, but the real reason is because this file contains sensitive information, like database credentials, API keys, as long as you don't have any of that in the WP config file, it is fine to commit it to the repository. So how can you go about uh, including the file, but not the credentials? You can do something like what you see in the, on, the, on the screen. You basically have some conditional logic to include some extra files. In this example, I have one called WP config local, and that is the one that is going to be specific for my machine, for the development environment, for the test environment, for the production environment. That file is going to contain the credentials for the database in each environment, and that file itself is going to be excluded. Like, you can still have the WP config, that one is going to dynamically include the local file, but the local file itself is going to be included, uh, it's going to be excluded from the repository. So again, those are the commands. And uh, this is an example of what you see in uh, in the DDEP and in my local one, it is basically the same. You just move the, the credentials from the main primary file into a separate one that is loaded conditionally. Now, what about functions uh, PHP? Um, highly recommend that you do not modify this at all. Uh, and to me, it's a little bit scary that you can even do it from the UI, but it is what it is. Um, 
it is better if you are uh, working with a theme, just create a shiny theme. And if you, for some reason, wanted to modify the one that comes with WP includes, just create a custom uh, module. And the reason is, the next time that you update either WordPress core or the theme, that file is going to be overridden and you are going to lose your changes. And even though Git may be able to tell, you know, this file changed, if you are not careful, you might actually lose it. Uh, so, and, and it's just like not recommended. Another option is to use a, a plugin to manage code snippets. There are two here. For some reason, I am very scared of having PHP code in my database. But if you are inclined to do so, that's an alternative as well. But the recommendation is just create a child theme or a custom plugin, and that, that should do it. Um, what about the HT access file? Uh, this is only relevant if you are using Apache. If you are using Nginx, for example, no, this is not relevant. But that being said, if you go to the permalinks page and you save that page, no matter if you don't modify anything, that is going to create uh, an HT access file for you. If you already have one, it is going to override it. Uh, if you, if the one that if you, after you create the first one from this page, you can actually modify it. Uh, there, there are some instructions like if you add your rules before or after these comments, they are not going to be overridden. But again, this is the kind of things that, are, that Git is going to help you, like identify uh, if by mistake you are overriding something that you didn't intend to, intended to. And this is what, what you get out of the box. Uh, if anything before or after those comments are going to be preserved. Now, WordPress with Composer, and this is using Bedrock as a template. I'm going to go quickly here because it's more or less the same thing. It's just like different commands. Um, setting up the repository with DIDA. Uh, the difference here is that I am not using WPCLI to download or uh, WordPress core instead I'm using it to create project and that is going to give me the, the basic uh, structure for, for WordPress. I add the files and commit them. And for updating is oh, yes, the, the composer update, that is how you will update Drupal uh, WordPress core. In the case of the database credentials, it actually do not rely on them being present in the WP config file. Instead, you have a .env file in which you provide the variable and variables like that. And there is a, a, another PHP package that reads those libraries, load the, value, the values into the system, and Bedrock is going to be able to read uh, you know, those variable variables and inject them as needed to load the database. Uh, if you want to download a plugin, it is uh, Composer required, W package is plugin, in the name of the plugin. If you want to update a theme, uh, uh, W package uh, dash plugin is slash the name of the theme. Oh, I made a mistake there, but it's the name of the theme. In this case, I, I meant to put Ocean W theme. Updating, uh, contributed plugins and themes is very similar. Uh, composer update, composer update, there is that command that you want to remember. Uh, for removing uh, anything from contrib, composer remove and uh, should be removed over there too. And this is where things start to get kind of messy with uh, composer. If you have a custom or premium plugin, um, you need to add the code uh, and then you need to add it. If you are using Bedrock, this is in the context of Bedrock, you need to add an exclusion to the git ignore file so that folder in particular gets included into the repository, otherwise it, it, it won't, won't be able to see. Uh, for themes, it is more or less the same idea. Uh, the only difference is that you only add the folder, you don't need to add an exclusion because for some reason, uh, Bedrock decided that plugins, all of them would be excluded. Themes, none of them would be excluded, except for 2024, and the default one, so the only difference between themes and plugins is that with plugins you need the, ex the extra landing that get ignore file. Uh, what are some of the benefits of using Bedrocks? This comes from their own website, so you know, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, better folder structure, more security, being able to load variables dynamically uh, from the environment and inject those into WordPress.
Now, as I said before, it is important that you understand your tools. Uh, Bedrock is very popular, but it is very opinionated and has a completely different structure than regular WordPress projects. So if you don't want to use that, the one from JP Dodge, uh, it's more in line to what you would normally see uh, in a WordPress project. Uh, how, how, of this, uh, how are you able to install plugins and themes with uh, a plugin called Composite Installers and with a package called WordPress packages? Like, again, like, uh, this is taken from Bedrock as an example, just like a subset of the configuration file. Uh, you also need to understand versioning and, and semantic versioning and stability tags. Again, this, is, this can be a whole session on its own, so just as a reference. And this is some of the composer commands that I use on a regular basis. Again, I understand the tools. The slides are available, so you can look at them later on your own. Uh, Git commands that I use, again, very, very often. And some Git ignore files that you can use as a reference. As I said before, I, I, I don't intend to give you like the definite solution. Instead, look for examples and question yourself why they are ignoring this or why are they including that. Uh, if you are using continuous integration, there will be a talk about this later today. You can uh, build artifacts by like running Composer within that CI CD server, and then you don't need Composer in the production environment, for example. Uh, but WordPress is more than code. Uh, so we have the database, and in the database, we have you know, the post, which can be considered content, but we also have some configuration, like how things are going to be laid out. So I highly recommend that you look into this plugin called WPCFM. And what it does is it reads the database tables and it allows you to export those into a JSON file, which you then can commit to the repository. You push that, and then in the target environment you import. And then in, in this way you are uh, kind of dealing with configuration via version control. And take advantage of whatever hosting provider you're using. In preparation for this talk, I look at many different examples, and many of them include integration with both Git and Composer, and they give you, you know, their own recipes. So by all means, uh, take advantage of that. So a great way to learn something is finding a working example and breaking a purpose. So <laughs> happy to welcome. Thank you very much.